being a complete package. I hadn't seen that before. As soon as I saw that, it was pretty much over as long as I decided to make a trip to Taos and said, if they can do what they say they can do, that's the, we're, we're on. It's, it's game over, let's go. I was viajando solo, bajaba de Tijuana, and ya conocí a, a Kat, and she told me about the project of here, but she didn't tell me how many people there were, and she told me that she would come the next day to see what they were doing. I came and I saw everyone here. I imagined that there were five people, even ten, and then I saw 60, 70 people, and it was like, oh, my God. It was very good. I liked it, and then I saw that there was a good environment. I asked if I could stay. They said yes. I am very into graphic design and art and painting, but I also started to have a love for sustainability and I wanted, I know I want to live, you know, a sustainable lifestyle, so I wanted to learn about it. I saw a TV show about our ships about maybe two years ago, and uh, I was like, that's cool, you know, being able to grow inside your house, you know, year round, that appealed to me also, and just the, uh, being off the grid, so to speak, not having to depend on anyone for your life and your lifestyle. We're here at the end of the long year, and we've, we've spent the last year building uh, the foundations of a nonprofit organization that uh, wants to see homes like these built in large, in large numbers in severely impoverished communities. We spent the last seven months building a 500 square foot uh, structure of our own, and uh, now we're here to learn from the experts. Learn from the people who know exactly what they're doing. I vengo de la Ciudad de México representando una empresa y soy electricista. Venimos aquí a ver cómo trabajan los americanos y cómo hacen esta casa para nosotros poder eso hacer otra similar o igual a estas casas. Uh, I am uh, my girlfriend and I. We are uh, traveling for three months and we we wanted to volunteer as well. So this is one of the places where we volunteer. Ana es mi amiga desde hace cuatro años y me contó que iba a un proyecto de una casa ecológica. Yo no le entendí mucho al principio, pero me estaba diciendo que iba a hacerlo con materiales reciclados. Y ya renuncié a mi trabajo. Este vine a, desde enero pues a ver a ver cómo resulta esto. Just got the tail end of uh, an excerpt with Michael Reynolds, you know, he was talking about their, their build in Montana. And that inspired me, because I've been looking for a direction towards, uh, towards that avenue, you know, and I uh, pursued it and looked it up online and liked what I saw. I've always wanted to do something to make a difference, and I was trying to figure out what that was exactly, and um, I found an orphanage in Nepal. So three, that was three years ago. I made them a promise to, to help them get out of the situation that they're, that they're in. And so since that day, I've just been doing everything I can to keep that promise. Basically, where they're at now, they have, like, they have to pay someone rent for where they're staying, and they have no funds for food and everything. So if, if I can build a place for them that is sustainable, um, then they, don't want, they won't need any outside help anymore. And that's what led me to here. Energy. Photovoltaic cells are made from materials called semiconductors, mostly using silicon. Phosphorus atoms bond with the silicon ones, leaving one electron not bonded, resulting in negative silicon because of the prevalence of free electrons. On the other side of the solar cell, boron is added. Atoms also bond, but in this case one free opening is available for an electron, creating positive silicon. When these two sides are put together, a mad rush of electrons flow to the positive side. Eventually, equilibrium is reached and an electric field is created. This conducts electric current in only one direction. When light in the form of photons hits the solar cell, it excites the electrons and the field sends the electrons to the negative side. 
The metal contacts on the top and bottom of the cell draw current off, streaming towards another cell and so forth, creating a module or group of cells. When packaged into a frame, a solar panel is created. This will provide electricity cleanly and quietly for the next 30 years. As air particles collide against an object, each of them pushes with an amount of energy. The wind blades capture wind energy and start moving. They spin a shaft that leads from the rotor to a generator where magnets spin. If you have a conductor that surrounds those magnets, voltage is induced. Then it drives electrical current out through the power lines. At its essence, generating electricity from the wind or sun is all about transferring clean energy from one medium to another. The power generated by our sources goes to the power organizing module. This distributes energy to the batteries. When fully charged, it stops charging and sends the current for household usage. It also prevents overdraining of the batteries, making them last much longer. La información ahí está. La tecnología ahí está. La gente que quiere ayudar ahí está. ¿Qué falta? Que agarren ustedes y se pongan a hacer vivienda inteligente, vivienda natural. Tienes que agarrar y lanzarte a hacer como puedas, como puedas, vivienda sustentable. la independencia, ¿no? O sea, gente que no se tenga que endeudar para tener una casa, que no se tenga que, que matar trabajando para pagar sus materiales, cuando ya están ahí los materiales, ¿me entiendes? Encontrar una manera inteligente de lidiar con la basura que ya existe, irnos comiendo los basureros hasta crear áreas verdes, ¿me entiendes? Como que purificarnos poco a poco, ese es el plan. Water capture. Clouds move around the world propelled by air currents. For instance, when they rise over mountain ranges, they cool, becoming so saturated with water that water begins to fall as rain, snow, or hail, depending on the temperature of the surrounding air. Water from clouds is captured by the roof and channeled to gravel filters and silt catchers. So when it reaches your cisterns, it's clean. The water from the cisterns is then gravity fed into a water organizing module that pumps and filters water into a pressure tank for consumption and house usage. Sewage. Every time we wash something or flush the toilet, we create wastewater. Wastewater from sinks, showers, baths, kitchens and washing machines is called grey water. Usually grey water will contain household chemicals like soap and detergents and easily degradable organic materials like fat and oil. Consequently, grey water is channeled through a filter or digester for grease and particles, then sent into an indoor deep rubber-lined botanical cell. A botanical cell is a built soil ecosystem that consists of various soil layers. The first layer, composed of gravel, to allow water to flow and provide good aeration or oxygenation, preventing nasty smells. At the top of the botanical cell, Plants absorb water by the process of transpiration, where evaporation from the leaves enable water to be absorbed through the roots. Nearby root soil dries out. The water at the bottom slowly flows towards the drier soil near the plants. The flow allows phosphates and household chemicals to be completely filtered. The peat moss provides additional filtering, efficiently eliminating heavy metals, if any. At the end of the botanical cell, there is a grey water organising module which pumps the treated water to the toilets. Once the toilets are flushed, water now contains faecal coliforms 
and loads of organic materials. This is called black water, which goes to the septic tank. After the liquids are separated from the solids, the treated water is then channeled to an exterior landscaping botanical cell, feeding outdoor plants in the same manner as the grey water botanical cell. In short, earthships make very efficient use of the captured water by using it four times. First, you use it to wash, then to water your indoor garden, then to flush the toilet, then to water your landscaped garden. I'm looking out there even three decades ago and saying, this is bullshit, this isn't gonna last, this isn't gonna work. It's really just figuring uh, how to take care of my own ass so that I wouldn't be dependent on all these flailing political and economic and, and fossil fuel bullshit scenarios. And so I figured out how to take care of my own ass. And it was so fucking outrageous and free that I thought, shit, a lot of other people would really be happy doing this, I'm sure. So that's, that's what made me say, well, then let me at least show it to them. I don't want to cram it down their throat. I don't want to try and make them want to do it. I just want to show them, look, this is, this is killer. None of us are getting rich doing this, but it is enriching to do it. I love it. I love, I love what we're doing. You get a really a, a nice sense of self-satisfaction at the end of the day when you can stand back and see what you did um, and know that you did something that was helping and not hurting. You did it for a reason. I get to turn a lot of people on to something really cool that I really believe in and uh, have a blast doing. That's what keeps me going, just I like it. I'm enjoying myself, you know, I'm coming to work, I'm having a good time and doing the right thing for the environment and the world at the same time. It's like, it's, like, it's your cake and you're eating it too. Yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy my life. It's pretty fun, pretty wild. I get to meet all kinds of crazy people and build wicked cool buildings all over the place, so. We move pretty well together, you know, it's pretty, pretty good flow. We're just doing what is in our hearts, what we believe in, and it speaks for us and uh, we're, we don't have any intention of ever stopping. Food production. To survive, grow and reproduce, plants need water, sunlight, carbon dioxide, oxygen and nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen. All of these are found inside the earth ship, allowing many edible plant options to grow in your botanical cell. In short, Earthships can grow food year-round by providing sunlight all year, protection for the plants from extreme conditions like frost, an automatic watering system, a good soil composition, and nutrients from grey water like nitrogen and phosphorus.
At the end, earth ships are structures that are built using recycled materials, take advantage of natural phenomena, produce goods and use technology, creating beneficial contributions to environmental issues like the following. 1. Energy consumption. Fossil fuels supply around 90% of the world's commercial energy. This has to stop soon. Earthships reduce energy needs to a minimum by not needing central heating and air conditioning. By generating their own clean energy, they contribute to minimize global warming. 2. Water consumption. The water you normally get from the grid is pumped from lakes, rivers and underground water, often travelling long distances for human usage, consuming a lot of energy. United Nations has pointed out that by the year 2025, 50% of the global population will have water scarcity problems. With Earth ships, you harvest your own water, so it's a safe net, plus you help our planet by reducing global warming and water scarcity. 3. Sewage. The sewage systems around the world are inefficient. Normally we don't separate grey from black water, and in most places there aren't any water treatment plants, so it goes directly to rivers, lakes and the sea. Earth ships use water in such a manner that there is no actual discharge. Your wastewater will never leave your property, meaning you do not pollute nearby rivers, lakes or the sea. 4. Food consumption. Global agriculture uses 60% of the total fresh water in the world. Food production today has to be technified to meet the large demand, resulting in burning fossil fuels, using chemical nutrients and pesticides, therefore emitting greenhouse gases, polluting soil, water and the product itself. Moreover, food is regulated by the economic market, making you vulnerable to shifts in prices and availability. Earth ships produce food year-round, reducing expenses in family economy, health risks associated to pesticides and contaminants where food is grown, CO2 emissions by less fuel consumption, for example transportation for food imports, and water consumption for food production. 5. Wastes. Everything we consume is a potential waste, because nothing is useful forever. Some materials no longer used don't degrade, occupying space and contaminating in several ways. In the year 2000, the US, for example, generated 320,820,972.84 tonnes of waste from households, gardens, parks, as well as commercial and institutional entities. Earth ships use materials like tyres, that otherwise would have little or no use at all. So, in conclusion, Earth ships help our economy and are beneficial for local, regional and global environmental problems. If you get involved and spread the word, you can really make a change. Get educated, start looking around, start seeing where change can be made very easily and very simply in your own life. You don't have to change anybody else's life if you just start changing your own. Lead by example. Basically, it's time to make some changes, people, you know. I mean, this isn't the only solution. You know, building airships isn't the end all, the do all, or the be all. But it's a good start, you know. Learn how to uh, hold your own. Learn how to live off the land. If you don't like something, change it. Change yourself. Yeah, don't wait for others to change things around you, just do it yourself. Find something you really like to do, truly like to do, and stick to it, you know? Don't, don't feed into and buy into the I gotta do this because the money's good type of thing. Money isn't the, you know, can't take it with you. It's not the only thing. What really matters is that you enjoy what you do and you feel good about what you've done at the end of every day. You go home feeling good, wake up the next day feeling good, and that's what you should do. I think any person in this world has the ability to have and do whatever they want, whatever they really want with their heart, if they do whatever they can to get it, you know, and it'll happen, no matter what it is. Sean independent. Seamos independent.
y seamos libres y seamos inteligentes y entendamos nuestro, nuestra capacidad de actuar y nuestra capacidad de hacer cosas grandes. This is about what really matters in life. Truth, love, freedom. This is about life itself. This project changed me and I'm glad it did because I know that my family now point towards a better path. I hope this road leads us to a better understanding, to more responsibility, because it's time for me to start finding answers. I'm a father now, I have three children, and I think, what is it that I really want my children to learn from me, from their old man? It's respect for themselves and for nature, but most importantly, it's survival. They have to think for themselves. This is my greatest wish. But they must think of themselves as part of a greater system, the system of nature. We may think that we owe what we have to money or power, but the truth is we don't. If we don't have nature, we don't have life. And I'm part of the establishment, I admit it. But the change has to come from within the establishment. So all I'm really trying to do is follow a group of people that have started walking towards making things better.